you're seeing so much messaging about goals that have everything to do with what your body looks like. And again, those things aren't inherently bad. You're allowed to have goals that have nothing to do with your body and that are a little bit bigger than that. You want a heavier deadlift. You want to run a freaking ultra marathon. You want to do all these like big badass things. You are allowed to prioritize that more. You are allowed to want that more. You are allowed to put that over any any physique goal. It's really important that women know that their other goals are just as important. You are listening to the KML Movement Podcast. Connect with me on Instagram at Kelsey Lensman. Hope you enjoyed today's episode and don't forget to share with a friend. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the KML Movement Podcast. My name is Kelsey Lensman, and if you're looking on YouTube, you see somebody to my side right here, or up and down, either one. And today, guys, we have Coach Leah Baker. She's been on this podcast a few times, and she will continually be on this podcast as we go because she has such a wealth of knowledge not only from the science nitty gritty, from training and nutrition, but the mental side of things. And she knows it from things that she's been through, but also things that she's helped so many of her clients with. And I'm excited today to dig in where true growth can come from, but also growth from a place of love versus a place of hate. So Leah Baker, welcome back again. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be on again. This is always just fun. It's always fun. I know, right? I know. How um, have you been feeling coming into summertime, coming out of spring? How have you as a human been feeling? I have been feeling good. Um, Kelsey and I did a triathlon last weekend, but it was not any triathlon. It was a bike, kayak, ruck, and it was a 50-mile try. Um, so it was a lot of fun. So this week, to ask me how I'm feeling... Might not be the best week because I'm feeling it a little bit. Um, but other than that, no, I'm just excited to have some good trips coming up this summer. And this will um, be a really fun summer for me because the past couple of summers have also been fun, but with COVID and everything, this will really be the first big summer where I get to travel with like really a lot of freedom mentally between not feeling stressed about working out, not feeling stressed about eating as I travel. And like, I'm just excited about it. I'm just really, really pumped to be able to enjoy it and also progress um, in a lot of different areas of my life at the same time. So yeah. I love it. And I'm still feeling it from last Saturday. So it's okay. Um, and I guess yeah. that's, I, I, I was feeling all right on Sunday. I was feeling all right on Sunday and Monday. And then training wise, I was like, Oh, maybe not. <laughs> We're the same way. Um, and that, Leah, segues into what we really wanted to talk about today is you mentioned yeah. it in summertime that you're excited to travel because you're not just so hyper-focused on every little morsel of food or when am I going to get all these training sessions and it's this freedom that you're coming from. And I know if you've listened to previous episodes with us, that always hasn't been the case with you or with me. And what I really, and what we talked about really wanting to dig into today is that place of growing or that place of wanting to progress, not just physical body, mm -hmm. but where are you coming from? So can you bring us into not only just your experience, but working with clients where they want to improve them, either from a place of love or potentially a place of not love and hate? Yeah, actually, this, I don't know if this will answer the question or not, but this has come up in a, in a lot of my client check-ins over the past couple um, weeks and honestly months. So many of my clients have had trips and vacations and weddings and all these different things. Um, and to see them navigate it, a lot of them have been newer clients, so they haven't been with us super long. And to see them navigate that has been super interesting because I see so much of where I used to be in them and their experience. And and I guess I won't speak for them, but I'll speak for myself. Of when I used to travel or just literally just do life, like I would always be so stressed about um, meeting these expectations that I would have for myself of perfection, of feeling like I was obligated to 
track every single morsel of food, feeling like I was obligated to get in every single workout. And it was never from a place of desire or choice. It was always from a place of obligation and guilt, if that makes sense. And so I guess it kind of ties in your question and ties in what I was thinking too, of being able to go through life, travel, go to weddings, go to these celebrations, do do normal human life things and actually enjoy it. And also be able to progress at the same time comes down to your, your ability to make that choice out of appreciation for yourself and desire for where you want to go rather than out of obligation for what you feel like you have to do or guilt for doing something or not doing something. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like I always say this on the podcast. I don't know if that answers your question, but that's where my brain went with it. Yeah. And you've shared that previously you've had that where it was out of obligation for you. So can you give us to give contrast, give us an instance or kind of a hypothetical situation of maybe you feeling out of obligation, what were the thoughts in your head? And then we'll flip it on its head of now doing it out of appreciation or love for yourself. Yeah, yeah. I think a really tangible example for a, that might relate to a lot of people is going out to eat. And this is something that we all do sometimes, right? Um, but I would used to go out to eat And I would always order a salad, whether I would like it or not, right? And that's just an example. It doesn't have to be a salad. It could be you're not having any carbs, not getting a drink, not doing whatever you think or feel is the healthier option, right? Um, I used to feel obligated to do that. I would sit down at the restaurant. I would look at the menu, and I would look at all these things that I wanted, and I would look at all these things that sounded so, so good, and then that automatic feeling of I felt guilty for even wanting those things um so I would default I would default to what I believed to be the healthiest option which was in my head at the time was the salad right so I would choose the salad even though there were 10 other things on that menu that I wanted and the reason I was making that choice wasn't because I wanted to make that choice it wasn't even because I was thinking about how is this going to make me feel later or how is my stomach going to respond? My stomach, (laughs) but how is my stomach going to respond and all these things? I wasn't thinking about that stuff. All I was thinking about was you, you have to make this choice. You, you have to do this or you are wrong and you are all of these feelings. You are undeserving. You are unhealthy. You are, um, lazy, stupid, silly. Like, I know that sounds kind of dramatic, um, but I say that because I think I'm not the only, I know I'm not the only one who feels that way or has felt that way. And to contrast that, what I feel now when I go into restaurants is totally different. It's a total 180 from where it was before. So now when I walk into a restaurant, I see the options on a menu and I look at what I want a lot of times, I'll order that. Um, and, and sometimes I don't. Like sometimes I order just what I want and sometimes I order something that still sounds good, but I know maybe I'll feel better or it does align with my goals. But the difference is now I'm making that choice out of, I'm making that choice out of the power of choice. I'm making that choice because that's what I truly want of the route I want to go, not because I feel like I have to do that. And I know it, it doesn't, sound that different but it is it's completely and totally different now I know I have the choice hey I can get what I want I need to have expectations of how am I going to feel later or those sorts of things but I get to make that option or I get to make that choice for myself um, which is a really really cool place to be because it allows you to work towards your goals and still enjoy life while you're doing that that makes sense yeah it makes 100% sense And that similarly with me, it's like now when I go into a restaurant, it's, well, how do I want to feel later? Like sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, I want all the ice cream because I don't care if I don't feel too hot. Like I just want that versus sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to pass it up. Not because I can't have it, 
but just because I just don't want to feel like crap yeah. tonight or tomorrow. And it comes from this place. Right. Of, it doesn't have as much emotional charge, I think, is what the biggest piece of yeah. it is. But I know there's somebody out there, Leah, and they're like, okay, Kels and Leah, this sounds great. Like, yes, that sounds like a beautiful yeah. place to make a choice from, but I'm so frustrated where I'm at right now. Or I'm, I don't even know mm. how to get to that spot or it just seems so far away from me. What would you tell them or can you talk with them about what potential steps to take or make for them? Mm. That's a really good question because the answer is going to look a little bit different for everyone, right? Um, and actually, I was just talking about this in a check-in with one of my clients yesterday. Um, we were talking a little bit about, like, where our beliefs come from and, like, where all the underlying beliefs that we might not even know are there, where those come from. Sometimes they're from our parents. Sometimes they're from... Um, the media. Sometimes they're from our peers growing up. Like there's a ton of different sources that they can come from, but they can also be vastly different beliefs from person to person. So I know for me, I believed that in order to be healthy, I had to do this. Or in order to be worthy, I had to do this. That's how I felt. That's what I believed. Um, but for someone else, like the source of that tension or the source of that issue might be totally different. Um, but I'll say no matter what the belief is or like what you feel like that is or where you feel like it comes from, the most helpful thing I think you can do is it's kind of twofold. One is identifying the beliefs, like identifying what you, what you believe and feel about yourself and also identify what you believe to be true or not what you believe, but what you know to be true. So how you believe and feel versus what you know to be true, right? Yeah. So you might feel like you have to do things a certain way, or you might feel like you, um, or you might believe that you need to always choose the salad or you don't care about your health, right? On the flip side, what do you know to be true? You know that those things aren't true. You know that you can have the other options. You know that you can choose the salad if you want. You know that it's a power of choice and the sun is still going to rise tomorrow, regardless of what decision you make, right? But sometimes there's a gap between those two things. There's a gap between what you feel and what you know to be true. Um, so I guess I lied. My, my, I guess advice would be threefold. Um, one is identifying the belief. Two is identifying what you know to be true. And three is working on bringing those two things together. And that's what I, I know it was for me. And it was a lot of work in therapy and it was a lot of work with a registered dietitian of challenging those beliefs with what I know to be true. And it was not an overnight switch. It was not by any means an easy thing to do, um, but that's what it took. Um, and it was a process, but it was a process that was more than worth it because it's where I am right now. It's why I am here right now. That's powerful stuff. That's, I mean, that's deep. That's powerful things from, we yeah. talked about ordering <laughs> food at a restaurant to beliefs and feelings and what you know to be true. And as yeah. you were talking about that, Leah, it automatically came up for me as people can feel and believe these things, but sometimes they just don't mm -hmm. even know what's true because there's so much out there yeah. that they don't even know facts either. So like maybe they feel and yeah. believe that they shouldn't have carbs, but also maybe they think that they know that they shouldn't have carbs from what they've been seeing. So right. if yeah. there's somebody out there that identifies their feeling, but really doesn't even know, like they're just getting information from a bad yeah. place too. I guess what advice or what, can you speak a little bit on that as I was thinking about it yeah. a little bit deeper with it? From a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like, that's where it's, again, we live in a world of heaps and heaps and heaps of information and everyone, everyone has a podcast, right? Uh, people who maybe shouldn't have podcasts have podcasts. Um, but I guess the most important thing is finding 
sources that you align with, um, but also being willing to find sources that challenge what you believe, I think is a very helpful stance to take. And that's what I do. I follow some people as far as like Instagram, I follow some health professionals that I don't completely align with. I follow some that I do completely align with. And usually there's one or two things that we differ opinions on. Um, but I guess my point in saying all that is look at who you're getting information from and be willing to challenge that a little bit. Um, because I know for the longest time, I thought that tracking every morsel of food that went into my mouth was the, was the way, was the only right way to do it. Um, and a large part of that was because that's who I was getting my information from. That's what they were saying. And as I grew and as I diversified kind of who I was getting information from, I was exposed to these ideas that like you can do it a little bit differently and there are other ways to do it, right? And that's when I was able to challenge what I thought to be true and explore different options and explore different things, right? Um, so I think if you don't even know what you believe, that's kind of where to start. And it can feel a little bit overwhelming of like, who in the world do I listen to? Everyone's saying different things. Um, but I think that's a really cool thing because you get to decide and look at where you land, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as, I mean, like tangibly, what sources? I think we're a pretty great source. <laughs> I might be a little bit biased in that. Um, but from a like nutrition standpoint, from a training standpoint, um, it's just super tangible to follow people on Instagram, right? I would say go read all these research papers, but in reality, most people aren't going to do that. And that's okay, right? Um, so follow good sources on on Instagram. Follow good sources on, I won't say TikTok. TikTok is full of too many sources and too many people who should not have a social media platform. Um, but that's besides the point. Um, but I know... Can I mention like specific people? Is that okay? Yeah, if you want to, you're more welcome to. Okay, sure. Um, I know like Little List Fitness, Strong Like Shelby, um, Claire Barbell Medicine. I don't know her last name. That's how I know her because that's her Instagram handle. Um, Dr. Adrienne Chavez. Like there's a lot of great resources out there. Um, so I guess that's my long-winded response to how do you know what you even know? Yeah. And, and I love that you brought it to there and I recorded a podcast with Navi the other day and when it feels all very overwhelming too it's go back to the yeah. foundation get three sources of protein walk yeah. out like move your body outside you know so yeah. at the same yeah. time with that I love the challenge belief thoughts and it can feel very overwhelming and it can feel like oh my gosh everybody's saying different things as you get back to the grassroots for you everybody will come back to that. And that's a good foundation for them to have. Um, but as we, I wanna, I wanna bring us back to the scenario of yeah. when you chose the food from frustration or what you feel, feel like you had to do versus you having the freedom now. And I know we see it a lot, Leah, with clients that come in, they're wanting to get better, but